Okay, we're here this time to talk about swarm prevention and swarm control. The, uh, oh, got a bee after me there. The, uh, with prevention, what we're trying to do is to stop the bees from even beginning to prepare to swarm. And swarming happens when the hive gets really crowded, there's a lot of congestion in the hive, and there isn't enough queen pheromone going around. So they start to raise new queens, and then they will swarm uh, prior to those new queens hatching out. But uh, as a beekeeper, we don't really want bees to swarm because they, uh, we lose our production. Uh, bees are living off in a hollow tree somewhere, aren't going to help us out. So we try and prevent that swarming from happening so that we get more honey production. So what we do uh, as far as swarm prevention with our colonies is we, first thing in the spring we go around and we label them with how many frames of bees there are. So we know which colonies to go back and inspect for swarming and which ones may need supering earlier. One of the preventative measures for uh, swarming is to provide space for bees so they're not as congested. So we provide space by adding honey supers. So the process of supering the colonies helps to prevent swarming. If we have uh, a young queen in the colony, that helps prevent swarming as well. And there are certain uh, strains of bees that are less prone to swarming, and so we try and keep those bees in our hive. And we select for colonies that have a low tendency to swarm. Um, the, we do clip our queen's wings, which helps to prevent swarming, but it really just delays that until a virgin can hatch out, so that we can't rely on that alone. Adding supers at an appropriate time is the most effective way of preventing swarming. So we'll just have a look through. Uh, this colony was rated a five. As you can see now, it's grown to where there's 10 frames of bees plus. There's lots and lots of bees in there. We're too late in adding a super to this colony. We should have been here sooner on this one. Uh, this colony is probably uh, not as bad as far as preparing to swarm, so we'll just have a look. And uh, we will be supering these colonies right now. But I'm just going to have a look, see, okay, lots of bees there, side to side. Again, this earlier was rated 4.5. It's now 10 frames of bees. So that was uh, rated 4.5 on April 19th, and now we're at May 24th. So we'll just take frames out and we'll have a look see to see if they're raising any queen cells. If they are, we're going to remove those queen cells. Just very gently pull that frame out. There's a lot of drone brood on this frame, and so it's a little hard to take out. Okay. So you would see swarm cells in locations where there is room for a cell to hang down. That is a, a queen cup. Doesn't mean they're preparing to swarm, because often they have those cups around just in case they need them. So that's a queen cup. Uh, we differentiate queen cups from queen cells. Uh, if it's a queen cup, there's nothing in it. If it's a queen cell, it'll have an egg, or a larva, or a pupa. So to see if there's any egg in there, we just open up the cell with our fingers, look inside, and there's no egg there at all. So that's just a cup, no indication they're preparing to swarm on this frame. having a look for the queen as we go just to try and make sure everything's good. Lots of nice brood in there. This hive is just going to explode with bees. Here we see another cup here and there's nothing inside that cup so no indication that they're preparing to swarm. We'll look at three brood frames. Uh, if we're on brood frames that's where the queen cells will be if they're raising any. So we don't have to look at all of them uh, because we'll find cells if they're on, uh, as, as, but even just by looking at as few as three frames. I don't even see any cups on that frame. 
We would look in places like this for queen cells, or sometimes up on the face of the brood, but anywhere where they have space for that cell to hang, there's another queen cup over here. But there's no indication they're in use. We'll just open that up there. Nope, not, nothing there at all. So this colony is not preparing to swarm. It might later though. So what we're gonna do is we'll add uh, two honey supers to this colony because it's a good strong hive and we need to give them lots of space to help relieve congestion to prevent swarming. So just get that frame in there. There's a lot of bees on this frame and there's some drone comb on here. It's going to be hard to get it in there without crushing bees so I'm just going to give them a shake on the ground right near the entrance. And we're going to add uh, our queen excluder and then our two supers to that mm -hmm. hive. Give them a little bit of smoke so the queen exploder isn't crushing bees. And then we'll just set that down, get it squared up. We'll add one super on, make sure they're nice and straight. Get a second super on there. That looks good. Okay. So, we know that hive isn't going to swarm, and we've supered it to help prevent it from swarming, and that's about all we can do for now. This next hive, we'll have a look through, and with all those bees hanging out front there, it wouldn't surprise me if it's preparing to swarm. Again, we're kind of late with getting to this one for supering. The weather got really warm all of a sudden here and uh, things are just jumping. We even saw a few bees dancing on the surface of this, uh, of the, the front of the hive, dancing to indicate where to fly to find flowers. There was a number of different directions being indicated there. So lots and lots of bees inside this hive and outside as you can see. So bees from one side to another. So if we see swarm cells in here, we're going to have to make a decision as to what to do. That will be based on what we see and if we can find the queen. Lots of cap brood here. And again along the bottom there we see cups. But they may actually be cells. They've been drawn out a little bit. So let's open one up and see if there's anything inside. Aha! There's an egg in that one. So this is now a swarm cell. And they are preparing to swarm. Just because they're preparing to swarm doesn't mean they actually will. If they get onto a good nectar flow, sometimes they abandon uh, swarming. Now what I'm going to do is look for eggs to make sure the queen is still laying. Yes, I see lots of eggs. So the queen, at least three days ago, was laying eggs. Okay, so the queen is still laying. If she was not laying, I would not destroy the cells. Because if she's not laying, they may already have swarmed. And the queen's gone. And if we destroy all the cells, the hive will have no queen. So we're going to have a quick look for the queen. There she is. So, she, she's uh, getting smaller. She'll be laying less eggs now as she's preparing to swarm. So you can see her abdomen is not that big. She's shrinking up and getting ready to fly away. But that won't happen because she, one wing is clipped. So what we're going to do is we will cage this queen. And then we will remove any queen cells that are present. And that will prevent them from swarming. And we'll give them four honey supers because they need a lot of space with all these bees. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we set the frame down there. And then we're going to shake off each of the brood frames. This one I can see is solid honey. So there's no honey, no, won't be any cells there. So we make lots of space. I've got two frames out of the box. So I've got lots of room to shake. And we just shake the bees off like that and check for cells. There's a cup, cup. You don't have to look at them all now. You're just looking for cups or cells and destroying all of them. If we miss one, there wasn't much point doing this because they could still swarm. So that's why we shake the bees off because we will miss them for sure. Or miss some for sure if, if we don't have the bees all out of the way. So cup, cup, cup. And then just scan the rest there. So it doesn't take that long to do this. And a nice sunny day when there's a ne good nectar flow, these are pretty easy to get, get along with. And we're able to shake them off like that. Oh, there's a, a more developed cell. I didn't see that before because the bees were covering the frame. But if I open that cell up, you can see it's full of royal jelly. And the, there's the larva there. So that larva would be, I'm guessing, four to f four or five days old. So they're getting along on their way to, to swarming. So that's why that queen was getting smaller, because it is the swarming is more imminent than I thought at first. I'm just going to scrape that whole, there's probably a number of queen cups in there, so we'll just scrape that off. Most of these don't even have eggs in them, but rather than take the time to look, we just destroy them all. So now we're done there, we can release the queen. There she is, dropping down in, away she goes. So now we can put our cleaning scooter on and add our supers to the side. And it needs lots. It's ready to go. So we're hoping all that space and the fact that we've removed those queen cells will eliminate the chance that they will uh, carry on with swarming. But we will come check back and check within 10 days to see if there are queen cells present and if so repeat that process. Quite likely though we'll be getting into a major nectar flow and this that'll be it. They won't, uh, they'll abandon this swarming impulse and get on to collecting nectar. See you next time.